Hi guys, Sam from Walkgate Studios here. Today I'm gonna look at using this product. Let me grab it here. This is the main thing that I'm gonna be using today, chipping medium, to kind of make things look chipped, rusted, um, and give that kind of nice feel to it. So um, this is water-based one. As you can see at the top, it's a Vallejo water-based uh, chipping medium. There is a ton of different chipping mediums out there. Uh, there's also some old tried and tested methods like salt methods and those sorts of things which you can do as well. Um, but I'm, for this for this video, I'm literally just gonna be using Vallejo chipping medium and showing people how awesome and cheap and easy it is to get awesome effects. So the first thing I'm gonna do, primed uh, this, this container and I am going to, um, give it a base coat of some browns for the rust. So with this this method, you wanna do all of your um, rusty colors before you do your top layers. So it's, it's a matter of layering, um, but it's an interesting method of layering. So I just wanna kind of give you guys an idea of, of how this works um, and get it done in a video so that other people can, that's all right, I'm just shaking up one of the, uh, the paints here at the moment, the brown. I just I need to get some layers of brown on here, just different layers of brown, um, and get this uh, the compressor going, um, and get this sprayed on. You don't necessarily need to worry about at being super neat with this base layer. It's just getting some colours on. Not really gonna worry about the top too much because that's it's gonna get a little bit. I'm just gonna play around and just get some layers of brown on this in places. And again, what you probably want to do is work on corners and make sure all these corners, because they're gonna be the places that I'm gonna be applying a lot of this. Maybe where it's uh it's going to be stacked. Just give it a little bit of that. Okay, uh, so that's the first color. I'm going to do another couple of colors of rusty um, on this, and then we'll get this going. So the next paint I'm going to be doing, uh, the first paint was just a uh, German camo medium brown for model color. Um, this next paint is going to be a Doom Ball brown from Games Workshop. I love mixing all my colors just so that it never gets boring. And just gonna add some of the thinner and give this a little mix in the pot. You can, if no one knows about this, block up the end of your airbrush and then do that and it actually mixes in the airbrush for you. And then you can get on and do another color. You can see this is going to be coming out a little bit different. Just give it kind of a camo pattern. Of different browns. And trust me, once you actually get all of these on, it starts to look like a rusted container, which is awesome, which is exactly the effect you're going for. And once we've gone through that brown, we're going to go through an orange red. Um, I've got like four colors I'm gonna do on this model. Um, the next one is a model color, Vallejo, orange, red. I'm just gonna put this straight in. Again, don't need to wash everything out. This is all gonna be uh, mixing in with the browns and, the, and everything else. So just uh, make sure that, that uh, you're keeping it nice and thin. Put a bit of uh, orange in there. And we're not gonna go crazy with this because I want it kind of more of a muted brownie color anyway. And again, gonna quickly mix this up in the pot. And then give this a little bit more of an orange streak. Mm. 
you can kind of see all that orange coming through. And again, this will become a more apparent once we get the base coats on. Just giving them a little bit here, there and everywhere. And then the final coat I'm gonna do is the Troll Slayer Orange from Games Workshop. And this will be my last uh, color that I'm gonna use on this model, uh, for the base coat anyway. And I've got to give this a good shake. So yeah, everything I'm doing at the moment is just getting that base coat down for all the, the rust textures underneath. And then what we're going to be doing is we're going to be spraying a uh, the uh, chipping medium over the top. You can stipple it as well. And that's one thing I'm, I may well do on one side um, and the spray on the other. But it really doesn't matter. As long as you get that spray medium on there, that's all that matters. Let me give this airbrush thinner. Go get some thinner in it to get this thin down a touch. All right, cool. And then we're just gonna get a little bit of this orange on it. Be careful with this one, because this one is really super bright. Do a couple of areas where it's built up and that is going to be our base coat. So awesome with that. I'm going to pour all of the remaining stuff away and get my airbrush clean. That's the thing that we need to do now is give this a really super good clean out. Um, all I'm doing is just pouring some thinner into the cup and then we get a brush, a clean brush, give it a good old working in around in there. Um, and the first one I do, I don't put this through the airbrush, I just pour that straight out. Um, and then I can clear a lot of the browns and stuff that are still in there. And then I'm going to put some more thinner in and start shooting this through to make sure this is all clean. And you can you can tell how clean your airbrush is just by pouring stuff into it and seeing exactly what it looks like. And again, this. Shooting through clearer and clearer. I'm getting a lot more stuff out of it. Um, and then I can look into it. See, there's still some some brown coming out of it. I'm going to give this a quick a little bit more and don't forget to get your pads give it a good old working in there to make sure that the tip is good and still a little bit coming out but i'm i'm good with that yeah it's clear now sweet um and then I'm, we're going to work with the chipping medium so i'm going to throw some of this through the airbrush as well um, so, uh, again, this can go through as is, uh, it's kind of good. Uh, we're just going to put this into here and we're going to give this a spray on where we want the chipping to be. So I'm going to kind of start working this pretty heavy on the model. run out so I need to put a little bit more of the chipping medium in there excellent and let's finish this off
Excellent. Now, this does take a while to dry, so I'm going to give this about 15 minutes and then we'll be back and I'll get that top coat on. Okay, so the chipping medium is now dry on here. You'll see that it's still got a little bit of a glossy finish to the chipping medium, but this is completely dry. It only took maybe five, 10 minutes to dry, um, but we're good to go now with our other layers. So uh, the two colors I'm gonna use, just to make sure this is as bright as possible, I'm gonna use Vallejo Turquoise, um, Mecca Turquoise, which is awesome. And then a highlight of the Games Workshop air temple guard blue so these two colors here um should should make out for quite a nice bright um uh, finish on this thing so we're going to give this a complete coat of this um to to uh to to get the effect looking awesome um so i'm just going to get some of this going now the good thing about the mecca um is that it's it's meant for airbrush work so it means it's a very minimal amount of uh, reducing or uh, adding on here but uh, let me get this going and then we're literally just going to spray and coat this completely go through this mecca pretty quick when you're giving it a base coat like this um, but it's a gorgeous uh, gorgeous finish really love this color as well uh, it's a, just a nice nice shiny turquoise and we're pumping it out and we'll get this completely covered Spin this around, get the last. Okay. Looking good. Um, so we're going to work on this, just getting this a nice layer on here. And again, don't need to be completely crazy um, with it. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to finish off with the Temple Guard Blue. And uh, we're going to get that on here, which is just a slight highlight. And we're just going to give it a quick airbrush highlight while we're doing all of this. Um, I am going to wash out a little bit of the paint because we've got quite a bit left of the Mecca. I'm just gonna push this out with a little bit of water and a little bit of thinner. Again, we're always running stuff through this to keep it wet, to keep it running and keep it good on the, on the brush. Um, the Games Workshop uh, Temple Guard Blue. You do need to dr to make sure that this is watered down, even though it's an airbrush um, based or airbrush specific paint from Games Workshop. You do need to uh, make sure this is reduced down a little bit with some thinner. Not too much, but enough just to make it work. Uh, give this a mix. And then we can give this a little bit of a highlight. My nozzle's got a little bit tangled up, so we're gonna give that a quick clean. Just just jamming this in here. Yeah, look, there's a lot of crap in there. If this ever happens, you get stuff doing it on the on the needle. Just give the needle a quick wipe down. Yeah, and we're good to go again. Airbrushes can be really, really awesome, but they can also make things a bit more of a pain. Oh, 
Okay, uh, I'm happy with that. Base coated, a big teal color. Um, now we're gonna wait for that to fully dry. We've got to wait for the, the top coat to fully dry. While that's going on, I can clean my airbrush now, get this completely cleaned up um, and bright and shiny and new uh, while this is drying. And then I'll come back and we can actually finish off the uh, effect. Okay, so finishing off the effect, uh, last bit that you want to be doing is going and grabbing a really old crappy brush that's probably as bristly and as crunchy as possible. Really good. I always keep this one around. It's a crap $1 or less from the, the hobby store. The other thing that I've got, uh, believe it or not, that work really good on this as well, is sculpting, to, sculpting tools. So these are flexible, um, uh, like silicone-based uh tools to work with when you're sculpting i've got some old ones here that i like to use on this as well so this this helps as well so the the first thing that really to do is just get stuck in on this just get some water um and you can either spray this through your airbrush or just get a bit of water on here um and now you can start working on this and you'll start seeing the effect coming coming through with the uh with the water, it reacts with the water underneath. So um, you can kind of start working on this and really kind of going crazy. Because again, the more you get into this, the more it will look absolutely fantastic. So you can kind of go crazy. Where is this going to be scraping um, on, you know, girders and those sorts of things. And you can get stuck in with the water and get don't be afraid to kind of go crazy with it and really get uh, it in there. Again, what you wanna do is, this will start, you can see that the, it's taking off that top layer of paint. Um, and then what you can kind of do is either you can get um, your, uh, cotton buds and just tidy it up and you can even work it with the cotton buds the cotton buds will still do do its thing as well and you can kind of just tidy up get get rid of some of this um and just get stuck in there and what i like to do is get down into the bottom parts of hit this because this is where all, most of the rust is going to be and just start, you can, uh, there's so much you can use on these things and I'll show you really how you can kind of um, get the, the sculpting tools as well. The sculpting tools are a little bit more fine. So you can kind of like start working on them right in the bottom. They've got a little bit more pointy. Um, so you can kind of get stuck in. Um, and that's the sort of effect you're going for is to try and get this chip in um, and it looking like a natural rusty, uh, method of, of 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 weathering i love it i think it's an awesome product really really good and as i said there's tons out there the old school method of this was the salt chipping um which a lot of military modeling uh folks would would understand and know um but that's really where you're going at um with this and you can kind of go crazy so i've kind of done the bottom bit where it would be rusted i'm now going to go on the top and get get stuck in on that as well so we're going to get some water on a brush and just paint it on and then we can start working on it and you can kind of see on the corners and again it will just start taking paint off you can kind of see on the corner there where i just sprayed a little bit of it and on there as well and it just just takes uh, the the top layer of paint off to reveal the rust texture that you did underneath so i'll do it on this back part as well just to kind of show you we're going to just do the rusty parts of the bottom and all those different textures uh that you put on with the bright browns will come across as just a really natural rust finish on the product and make it look awesome. 
So there you go, That I'm gonna crack on now with this. Um, once this is done, what I'm actually gonna do is seal it with a uh, matte varnish sealant um, and, uh, and make this look freaking superb. Um, you can do this with logos as well. I was actually thinking of maybe putting on a nice, you know, eagle or something in white as a as a, uh, a, a kind of marking for the, the haulage company that would have this. Um, but I didn't want to go into too much detail on this video. So uh, this is really just a, a method of showing you how to rust up um, these, these bits and make them look uh super super fun um and as i said once you're done with the weathering that you want to do you can use pigments on this you can use rust stains um you can go kind of really really crazy on this um and yeah it'll look awesome so i uh, hope you enjoyed the video if you like this and want me to do more um review on the on these sorts of things let me know and, and instructional videos please like and subscribe really really uh, trying hard to, to get uh, that subscription side of things up um and yeah uh, i hope you enjoyed it and i'll uh, look forward to speaking to you soon and uh, on another video cheers